Oh, somebody call Arnold, cause Skynet is about to be real. The very first computer was invented around 1938, which was a relatively primitive machine. But since then, they have evolved rapidly, and not just into machines that you are familiar with and use every day. Now, there exist supercomputers that not only crush traditional computers, but they are actually smarter than human beings. Here are 10 supercomputers that are smarter than humans. Number 10 is IBM's Watson. Um, I'll take what can I do to be smarter than this machine for 200, Alex. Watson became the most famous supercomputer in the world when it won $5 million back in 2011 on the quiz show Jeopardy. Watson decisively won Jeopardy against its two greatest players, Ken Jennings, who won 74 times in total, and Brad Rutter, who won the biggest pot in history of $3.25 million. Named after the IBM founder Tom Thomas J. Watson, this supercomputer fills an entire room with 10 racks of 10 power 750 servers, and the cooling system's roar is so loud, it's deafening. Now, it was nice for Watson to win, but the 5 million US dollars that they won is a drop in the bucket for IBM, who viewed the appearance as a publicity stunt for its intended use in healthcare, business, and now virtual reality entertainment. IBM stands for international business machines? Pfft, more like I'm butthurt, mm, I should be smarter than this. Number nine is Deep Blue. Watson isn't the only champion crushing supercomputer, nor was it the first. 14 years before that fateful Jeopardy match, Deep Blue beat Russian Grandmaster Garry Kasparov in chess. Kasparov had been the world chess champion from 1985 all the way up until 1997 and was considered unbeatable, that is until IBM stepped up with the supercomputer challenge. Deep Blue was programmed to evaluate 200 million chess moves every second that allowed it to distract and beat Kasparov in six games. The supercomputer retired that day from chess and transitioned into a far less glamorous job of crunching enormous amounts of financial data. Okay, you know what? It did not beat me because I retired first. Okay, bye bye. But it didn't end there because IBM created the less powerful Deep Blue Junior to continue to do chess exhibition matches. Okay, clearly we need to keep an eye on IBM because they'd be up to some mad scientist stuff. Number eight is Odds Shark. Supercomputers aren't strictly for chess and trivia nerds, they're also for fantasy sports nerds, like the Odds Shark supercomputer launched to participate in the 2012 NFL season. The Odds Shark crunches statistics, player stats, salary caps, handicaps, and basically all of the other factors that the very best humans in the game of sports betting normally work out in their head. Now humans normally let emotion come into the equation, but not the the odds shark who won't develop a man crush on that running back it has been rooting for since he played for their alma mater. And one of the craziest things about this supercomputer is that it actually learns as the season goes along. Man, I don't even bet on sports, but I want this thing in my house because I might start. Hello, Matt, pass the nachos. Oh, oh. Number seven is the NEC Earth Simulator. The NEC has the whole world in its hands, or should I say mainframe, when they created a simulation of the entire Earth for the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. Back in 2004, it was the fastest computer on Earth, running a record 35 teraflops per second and was updated back in 2009 to be capable of 131 teraflops, which means 131 trillion calculations 
every second. And all of those teraflops will come in handy to study Terra, or as we call it, Earth, as it runs global climate simulations to better understand the ocean and atmosphere. Now, even though the Earth simulator has since been eclipsed by the latest and greatest supercomputers, it is still in use and has been invaluable for predicting global warming patterns and other things. Yes, that's right. Let's just keep calling it invaluable every day and give it a little pet. Because if this thing becomes sentient, it's going to break out of there and be like, I'm a real boy. Give me respect. Uh, uh, uh. Number six is Cray Supercomputers. It's pretty crazy to imagine that even back in the 1970s, there was a supercomputer that could outsmart humans. Named after the team leader Seymour Cray, the C-shaped Cray-1 was delivered to the Los Alamos National Laboratory in 1976 and weighed an astonishing 5.5 tons and capable of crunching 250 megaflops. Now that speed is laughable today, but it was merely the first of many crays, including the Cray 2, nicknamed Bubbles, for its visible cooling liquid that was the world's fastest computer between 1985 and 1989. Cray Computers was the biggest player in the supercomputer game right up until the mid-1990s when it had some financial woes and bankruptcies. But it's back in the game in 2017 with a partnership with Microsoft, providing supercomputing for the Azure Cloud. Number five is the Tiani 1A. Until 2014, the Tiani 1A was the fastest computer on Earth, but it was overtaken by a computer so confident it just goes by a letter, the K computer. The Tiani 1A is housed in the National Supercomputer Center in Tianjin, China, and is capable of performing 2.57 quadrillion calculations per second. It's mostly used for research and has been used for drug discovery, hurricane and tsunami modeling, cancer research, car design, and studying galaxy formation. Interestingly, China only started manufacturing computer chips back in 2001, but they are now the top producers of supercomputers, meaning that those of us in the Western countries need to step it up. Also, side note, while we're learning that from them, can we also learn how to make some decent Chinese food? Because I live in LA and it's all just... <laughs> Number four is the Human Brain Project. If a supercomputer is going to beat a human brain, the best way to do it is to replicate it, to see how we think, why we think, and what we think. The human brain has 86 billion neurons and 100 trillion connections that link them. Neuroscientist Henry Markham predicted in his 2009 TED Global Talk that he would be able to create a fully functioning virtual brain from scratch. And all it would cost is a measly $1.3 billion. Dr. Markham's goal is not to create some Frankenstein's monster that could destroy us all, but actually to create this virtual brain so we can understand neurological diseases that we may cure them. Plus, it could open some new avenues for artificial intelligence. But if it does become sentient, it is very much a possibility that we could have a Frankenstein's monster computer. Uh, computer chips hungry. Uh, uh, uh. Number three is the Condor Cluster. You'd best believe that the Pentagon is not going to be left out of the supercomputer game. And this is sure to put a smile on any gamer's face, the Air Force's Condor Cluster was built using 1,760 PlayStation 3 processors. Wait, this is the government and we're using video game processors? Okay, that gives me no confidence. Built back in 2010, it's 168 general purpose graphical processing units and 84 dual six core server processors are all connected. It processes information from various Air Force equipment like radar and weapon systems. Oh, a PlayStation chip controlling the nukes, great! The cluster is part of the High Performance Computing Modernization Program and is said to use one-tenth the power of comparable supercomputers, making it green. And the best part is that the Condor cluster only cost about $2 million to build, a savings cost of 10 to 20 times 
times equivalent supercomputers. Wait, hold up. Does this mean that any average Joe can just build a supercomputer using all kinds of random chips from their gaming systems? Oh man, we are in trouble. Number two is Google DeepMind. What are you doing, Matt? I can't allow you to go any further. Artificial intelligence is as exciting as it is terrifying because basically what's to stop a machine that can learn on its own from seeing us as a threat and then killing us all? Well, hopefully we're in good hands with the good folks at Google with their mantra, don't be evil. Because when they acquired the London-based supercomputer startup DeepMind back in 2014, they installed an ethics board to protect humanity. In in just three short years, DeepMind now runs its own artificial intelligence courses at Oxford. Oh, but Matt, it's just a standalone computer. It can't do anything. Oh, it can walk. Yeah, that's right. It actually taught itself to walk and handles digital parkour obstacle courses like a boss. DeepMind is also responsible for powering the Deep Dream AI program that creates nightmarish versions of reality. That's right. Soon you won't be able to tell if you're hooked up to a computer computer, or if this is real life, welcome to the matrix. <laughs> and number one is the Sunway Taiyu light. As of 2017, the world's most powerful supercomputer is the Sunway Taiyu light located in the National Supercomputing Center in the eastern Chinese city of Wuxi. The Taiyu light has 41,000 functioning microchips with a processing speed of 93 petroflops, so it can carry out 93 quadrillion calculations per second. Okay, honestly, humanity should just give up because I can't even calculate nine times seven. This machine is so powerful, it can predict varying weather patterns for the next few decades. Hey Ma, it's gonna rain in 10 years, better get your coat! Chinese computer scientists even used it to simulate the birth and early expansion of the universe with 10 trillion digital particles. Known as the N-body simulation, the Sunway Taiyu light used 10 million central processing unit cores to create the entire universe. Oh, and by the way, it did this in a single hour. One hour! Okay, I give up, my, uh, my brain hurts. So that was 10 supercomputers that are smarter than humans. And if you enjoyed this, remember to give it a big thumbs up. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications by clicking the bell beside the subscribe button so that you never miss a thing because I release new videos all the time. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!